I'm a transgender man. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Michael Elroy. I'm 30 years old, I live in Israel. Um, I work for a digital marketing agency as a global partnerships manager. And uh, I'm a transgender man. So a transgender person is actually someone who is assigned a sex at birth, female or male, um, that doesn't match with who they are as a person or the sense of self. For instance, I was born female, but I always felt an incompatibility between my body and if you'd like to call it my soul. Uh, as a matter of fact, I felt this way right from the beginning, from the age of three. I remember that I used to um, play boy roles or with boy toys. Uh, I would pretend that I was a fireman, a truck driver, a policeman. Um, I would dress like a boy. And I always felt that I belonged more to the boys group rather than to the girls group. Um, so I guess that uh, on the outside it just seemed to many people that uh, maybe I was a tomboy and you know I just liked dressing like a boy but as a, as a matter of fact I felt like this on the inside um, the entire time. Uh, so I decided to do top surgery, uh, the removal of the breasts I would say, and take uh, male hormones which is testosterone. I decided to do this right after um, my service in the army which was around uh, the age of 22. Um, so I first did top surgery and about a week later I started to to inject uh, male hormones, testosterone, every three weeks. And the hormones have all kinds of uh, side effects. Um, hair grows, facial hair, the hair on my body. Um, my voice started to crack after a few weeks and I have a more masculine voice right now. Um, I think the fat in the body changes uh, goes to different places um, you get more you, you have more muscle um, usually you, I, I feel this way anyway I have a desire to eat more uh, I sweat more um, and I basically can you know get upset uh, easily um, there are more, there, there, there are a few more other side effects, but uh, I would say that these are the main ones. There was a point where uh, I was studying in an all-girls religious school, and I had the privilege of not enlisting, of not going to the army. So. At the beginning, I thought maybe I should just use that excuse and not go to the army, not serve, and just start this uh, transition that I was waiting for. Um, but after a few months in my graduation year, I just thought to myself that I actually wanted to serve in the army. And to be really honest, I just wanted to be like everyone else uh, and serve like anyone else because I didn't want to be any different. I wanted to be like all my friends. And I knew that if I were to go to the army, uh, it would be as a female, and therefore I'd have to serve with um, other girls, other women in the army. So I knew that it would be challenging, and I knew that this was before I did my transition, so I guess that people maybe saw me as uh, a woman. I have no regrets of uh, serving in, in the IDF, in the Israeli Defense Force. Um, and I knew that, you know, I lived like that for 18 years before I went to the army. So I said to myself that, you know, what is another two years of my life? And I didn't want to regret this stage. Um, so somehow I just kind of dealt with it. And I went to the army, I finished my service. And after that, I started my uh, transition process. So when I enlisted, um, I didn't tell anyone officially that I was a transgender person. The 
IDF at the time, this was about 10 or 12 years ago, um, didn't enlist uh, uh, transgender people and for that reason I didn't say anything about it, I just kept quiet because I, as I mentioned before I wanted to serve in the army and therefore um, I didn't tell the authorities officially but I told my fellow soldiers uh, and my roommates and when I told them, you know, I, 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 I had a lot of confidence at the time, I was not afraid of the reaction and I knew that if I showed them that, that I was afraid or I showed any kind of sign of fear, uh, they might not, you know, take it lightly or accept me the way I expected them to. So, uh, after all, I think that my experience in the IDF and with people knowing that I was transgender uh, was fairly positive and I think that my fellow soldiers uh, kind of accepted it even though it took them time to understand what that meant and you know what I was and uh, what I dealt with at the time but um, I think that all in all you know the attitude was was pretty okay uh, I know that today the IDF does uh, recruit uh, transgender people and they do find ways for them to kind of fit in in certain units um, which is great and I hope that uh, the army continues on recruiting transgender people because there's no reason why they should not. So uh, after the age of 22 and after I went under my transition I explained to the army that I was now a man and that to accept me as a man and this is the way um, I was mentioned in my ID card so they basically had to accept that fact and I told them that if you want me to do my reserve service as, as a man then great um, and that's what happened I, I kind of joined this different unit that I um, was serving with a few other men uh, and I had to sleep with them in the room in the same room um, and same thing goes for for showers I suddenly realized that although it was uh, fun and although you know my, my dream kind of came true of serving as a man um, I understood that you know if I had to go to the showers I, I probably have to explain myself or if someone saw me without a top maybe they'd ask me what are the scars that I have on my chest so it was really uh, difficult um, I remember that once I, I did my reserved uh, service and uh, there were a few days that I didn't shower when I was uh, on the base because I was, you know, incapable of showering next to other men even if I put on a bathing suit or something like that. Um, I was afraid that they would ask me all kinds of questions. So suddenly I find myself in a very complicated situation um, so yeah, I think all in all, somehow uh, I managed. So today I work as a global partnerships manager for a performance marketing agency. And um, it's pretty, uh, I'd say enjoyable, but on, you know, that, have, have that being said, um, it's also sometimes uh, tough. Um, my position is to bring in new clients and uh, kind of on the partnerships side of things. So besides that, during my free time, um, I like to go to the beach and uh, enjoy watching Netflix. But other than that, I would say that in, in terms of um, the transgender community and what I do in that sense, I. Um, I kind of instruct uh, a group for parents who have transgender children. So we all come together once a month um, and we have a kind of group session which is very interesting and I hope, hope helpful for the parents um, because it's suddenly seeing what the other side is experiencing. So. Me as a kid, of course, I was focused on my own needs and what I needed to do. Um, but sometimes you just don't see what the parents are going through. And now it's super uh, interesting and important. And I think that 
at one point or another we all need support in this in this world and in this life so um, I'm glad to to be doing that at this point as well so in terms of the state I would say that um, we're definitely making progress um, and you know there are certain there are certain health plans that, that help transgender people. Um, I know that trans, certain you know people who decide that they want to do top surgery at a public hospital, uh, they're capable of doing that and getting that uh, subsidized. Um, usually, when I you know get get my hormones, get testosterone, um, the healthcare system also. Uh, participates in the cost so I would say that in a way you know that the, the state is kind of making efforts towards the transgender community but we still have a long way to go so for example if I want to become a father in the future um, it's still not permitted in Israel there's no actual laws about that right now uh, which means that I'll have to go and do this overseas so this is something, and there are many other, um, many other privileges that, of course, uh, are not given to us. Um, so we still have a long way to go, and I think that we're in the right direction right now. But um, I think that the more our community comes together, and pro you know, if we protest and do things to achieve these goals. I think that, uh, and hopefully in the near future, in the next few years, we'll be able to, um, I guess, see better results uh, and, you know, receive, I guess, better treatment for, for our uh, community. And speaking of treatment, so if there's psychological support, there are certain um, organizations that help transgender people. Um, I myself was an instructor for transgender young people who uh, don't have the support of their families. So there are many organizations and many uh, people involved in the community to help transgender people in need. I think just trying to understand, trying to be more patient, uh, maybe not asking so many questions or questions you know that might make someone feel uncomfortable um, and just showing you know your support I think would be a good idea um, because many transgender people you know can go around in the world or walk uh, right across here in the street and you know a lot of things are going through our minds um, and we're not sure what the person who's facing us thinks about us or knows about us. Um, so I think, you know, being more patient and, and showing uh, that you care and showing compassion uh, can definitely, you know, help transgender people um, just go on with their day. And that being said, I'll just say that, you know, there, there are many transgender people who are suffering and dealing with depression um, and some who that I personally know have committed suicide so sometimes uh, we just kind of have to I think show restraint and again just be more patient and compassionate so uh, that a transgender person can feel more comfortable uh, in society. So, um, honestly, my next goal and my next dream is to become a dad, to become a father. And I know that it's going to take some time, it's not going to be so easy to achieve this goal. Uh, there are certain laws that do not permit me to um, go through this process here in Israel. It's a bit complex to explain, but... Um, I want to be a father, but I myself don't want to be the one who'd be carrying uh, the baby. And this is possible if it's taking uh, a surrogate, for example, or right now with my girlfriend, it's possible if 
she could be the one um, carrying the baby. This is technically possible, but unfortunately, um, there are certain laws, or you know, that, that do not permit like surrogacy in Israel for the LGBTQ community. Uh, and therefore, I'll probably have to save up a lot of money and do this abroad. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to take some time, but hopefully I'll achieve this goal one day and become a father. Thank you for listening. I hope uh, this was insightful and um, happy Pride Month.